is an unspoiled network podcast. This is unspoiled covering the laundry files. Book one, the atrocity archives by Charles Strauss. In this book. Um, yeah, all right. <laughs> Welcome to unspoiled. Welcome to the show, everyone. I'm Natasha. I'm Krista. And uh, yeah, so Krista like just finished this book like two minutes ago. Uh, pretty Not much. Not really. Yeah. Now yeah. uh, I I took a break after you said that I was I was pushing the bullet anyway. So yeah, about uh, ten minutes ago. So give me your impressions because when you started this, you were very unimpressed with this. What are you What are you thinking? What do you How do you feel now that you finished it? Uh, it it got better. <laughs> I got better. It did. It did. There was <laughs> hey, there was a reference to the dead parrot sketch, so that was nice. Right. But, but that was actually my problem with the book was it was as the book says twice too clever by half. <laughs> and that was my big problem with it was there was a really good story when he got into describing things. It was interesting, but he just wanted to be super kitschy and cool. Mm-hmm. And I looked yeah. shit up, and Nat- Natasha, I looked everything up. Yeah, see, like, you were like, I need to look up some of these references, and I didn't notice references, because that's how over the over my head they were. Like, I straight up just was like, that's a weird, I don't get it, all right, and just moved right along. So, apparently you caught on to a bunch of stuff that I didn't even notice. Which is which... good for you! Is it? Yes! I feel like... I mean, maybe it's good if, in terms of if you are somebody who kind of gets it and you, like, get slowed down by it. But I feel like the author would be very disappointed. This is how I look at it. Every time... Okay, I, we should backtrack and explain why I would actually know something Natasha doesn't. Oh, are you kidding me? I know so little. <laughs> I... Okay, okay, let's read a cookbook and see how well I do. <laughs> that is true. You didn't know what braising was one time. I still don't really understand it. You guys That's kept fair. on using other cooking words, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, so in any case, yeah, and, I, and it just turns into Charlie Brown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm thinking some of this turned in for you. So, Definitely. So this, book- you know, that's so funny because I actually was thinking to myself at one point how I completely tuned out during a couple things and just automatically tuned back in once it became a thing I understood again, because it really <laughs> frequently happened. So yeah, it very much was that way, actually. Go yeah, ahead, continue. Yeah. I'm sorry. So no, no, no. So the point of this book for folks who have not read the book, but just want to hear Natasha's reactions to books, which are entertaining in and of themselves, not that I've done such a thing because everyone should read all the books. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> is that <laughs> this book is about what if you took magic and computer science and physics and quantum theory and shit and slung it all together and it actually worked. Right. Which is a longstanding joke. I mentioned this to, oh, crud. There was a really nice person on the, on the unspoiled book club group that was talking. And now I feel like a jerk face. That was talk. What are you talking about? Uh, she she had mentioned in the book club that she was excited that we were going to cover this. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, Melanie. And so Melanie wanted to know what we were thinking about. And she, her, her husband, I think, is the one who really liked it and got her to read it and said that mm-hmm. the books after are, are good. Her husband did. She hasn't read them yet. But he's in IT. And gotcha. she's, she's a user experience designer. And so all these names that kept on popping up, particularly in the beginning, were the writer's way of saying, I know things. Do you know things? I know them. Mm -hmm. And then 
in every facet of storytelling, instead of describing things, he decided to use shorthand. It came from Nazi stuff, from where they were in Britain, from random shit like what Alamia is. I am lucky that I read another series of books that explained what Alamia is. What? When did he mention Alamia and what is it? Alamia. I have two questions on this. <laughs> okay. Look at how effectively I tuned it out. I don't even know when that happened. <laughs> okay, so... Please continue. So, <laughs> at one point, he and some other folks are trying to get to the source of a danger at a corporation, and the receptionist is not human. Right. Yes. She is a Lamia. Okay. It is a character from, I believe, Greek mythology, and they're immortal, and all these other things that are interesting that you would have been tipped off if you knew what the fuck a Lamia was. Okay. <laughs> but no, he just keeps throwing words at you. And then, at some point... I was like, I can't tell if he really means werewolves or does he mean the Nazi werewolf group? And he meant the Nazi werewolf group, which was, hey, guys, until the end, act like guerrilla fighters. Oh, OK. Got you. So yeah. there are all these references coming slamming at you. And unless you're the writer, the likelihood that you are going to know every bit of British slang, every bit of computer slang, every bit of. Lovecraft and Pinky and the Brain and all this other crap everywhere. You're either gonna want want your way through it, which mm -hmm. saves your sanity, or you're gonna spend like probably fifty percent of your time reading this book and looking shit up back and forth. Well, may I say thank you for doing that part, so I didn't have to. <laughs> Enormously appreciated. You really <laughs> took one for the team on this, and I will not forget it. Can I? What's that? Can I forget it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I hereby give you permission to reboot that part of your hard drive and erase that so that you have room for new data. Oh, that would be great. That would be great. And the other thing... Um, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Oh, and the other thing that I was laughing about when I was only like probably 100 pages in, and for me, I had the... I had a digital book. It was about 100 and. It was about 320 pages. Mm -hmm. So about 100 pages in, I checked into the group to see if the person who had been excited about this was a computer person. It was Melanie. And this parts of it are, are based off of a longstanding joke in the geek community that is prior to the book. Like I can, I even looked it up to make sure I was right about sacrificing a goat with a black goat with a pentagram to get a SCSI drive to work. Oh, okay. So that is legitimately dead bang in the middle. And I'm like, he took that idea and that motherfucker ran off with it. Holy shit. I'm so angry. <laughs> Holy shit. I'm so angry. She <laughs> said very calmly. <laughs> absolutely enraged out <laughs> of control right now you wouldn't like me when i'm angry <laughs> so i'm all always right. angry I don't... My on do this. it do it go sorry so i felt about this first book the way i felt about the first dresden files book except slightly less generously where I'm like, I really like some of the ideas you've got going on here. I am enjoying some of this weird world that mm -hmm. you're setting up and the whole techno pagan. Like this is very much feeling like, um, what's her face from Buffy. Oh yeah. Where... yeah, yeah. Oh, Miss, Miss calendar. Yes. That's it. Jenny calendar. Um, she she combines like you know the occult and wiccan and you know pagan rituals with technology and i think that that's something that isn't done quite enough there's always like i feel like everything that i have read and I, granted i haven't read a ton of sci-fi but most things that i have read whenever we get into 
anything that's like summoning demons or dealing in magic, technology does not work mm -hmm. with it because it's a whole other force. So I found it really interesting that we're going to try and combine them and have the tech be part of that force or able to m manipulate those forces like his palm top, which uh, can, you know, track people using thaumaturgy. Mm -hmm. what? And you went, thaumaturgy, yeah, I know that word. <laughs> right, exactly. So there are things here where I'm just like, all right, I, I hear that. So in concept, I found all of this really interesting. Also, the main thrust once you get into, like, the actual, um, like, final conflict part of this uh, book is that a bunch of Nazis, like, ran away onto another planet via a portal to try and bide their time so that they could come back to Earth with a otherworldly power slash being to help them take over. Except they totally misjudged how powerful that being was. It killed all of them and then was ready to hide out and wait for a bunch of dumbasses to run through the portal to save a girl and hitchhike back. Which also kind of awesome. Yeah. A bunch of like Nazis hiding on a moon. That's hilarious. And, and I really like that idea. And it kind of fits like, you know, I don't, I know that has Owen made you watch all the Marvel movies at this point? Oh yeah. Okay. So basically you see how this interconnects with the, Captain America and Bifrost and Frost Giants kind of scheme. It's actually something that parts of the Nazi, real life Nazis were trying to do. Okay, so yeah, because Nazis were weird into shit. They were into anything that could get them power. It was uh, like, uh, yeah. So, um, all right. So, all of that I thought was compelling and interesting, but. There's a lot of overly detailed techno babble mm -hmm. that I felt was a hundred percent unnecessary that I didn't think added anything except to make me believe that Rob knows what he's doing. And frankly, you only need to do that once for me to believe that he knows what he's doing. You don't need to keep doing it. And secondly, Bob is real boring. <laughs> and there are only two women in this entire book, one of whom is the love interest and, oh, actually, my bad, my bad. Crazy, like, crazy like, ex-girlfriend? Yeah, there's three. There's love interest, super hot redhead who, for some reason, is into him, even though he's nothing. There's a uh, crazy sometime girlfriend who constantly sleeps with other dudes and makes our dude's life miserable just for funsies because she's terrible. And there's harpy shrew-esque woman that constantly gets on his case at work that he has a final, like, victorious moment lording it over at the end because she's, like, completely insufferable and won't back down until she gets basically slapped down by a superior. Did Those are the women in the book. And, and the detective who has to prove she's a man before she's acceptable. Oh, I forgot all about, yeah, see? Because she's yeah. nothing, too, to me. And, and mind you, two of those characters are Mo and Joe. Lol. <laughs> yeah, Mo, Mo had to be given a, a dude name and had to be a big surprise. Oh, I thought you were going to be a man. And it's instead, like like we've all we all fucking saw the Matrix at this point, motherfucker. <laughs> so, yeah, that I just like. I just don't have a lot of patience anymore, and I realize that this is a book that was written long before this was, you know, something that I would be sensitive to. And a lot of you who listen to my Ready Player One review may be like, yeah, why did you, like, let it go, all of that bullshit with Ready Player One and still enjoy that book? And I have to be honest with you, I don't know. I'm really not sure. Like, there are just some things where I can get past it, and there are other things. I think it's because Ready Player One felt so absurdly heightened, and everything about it felt silly, that I was just willing to be like, okay, you know what, this feels like a, a like 80s teen high school movie Yeah, from the outset. So when all of these like really typical 
kind of hangups and 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 predictable plot points kind of roll up. This is what I'm here for because I have accepted that that's what this is going to be. Even though there really isn't a good reason for me to have accepted it, I just did. I I got the sense because of the way this book was written and the things that the book was holding up as being quote classics that that this was the ride I was on and I was okay with that. But Atrocity Archives feels like it's meant to be a more adult story mm-hmm. and doesn't feel like it's supposed to be a teen movie. Oh that, God, no. You know, like, no, 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 no. I had a higher standard and higher expectations. And also I felt like so many of the ideas were so out of the box and interesting that the fact that he stayed firmly within the box on other things that I, that I thought were glaringly obvious I, really frustrated me deeply. I also, and I also was slightly appalled and maybe this was the fact that this is how this is how people talked back then in ancient 2004. <laughs> but I looked up some of the slang, too, because I'm like, God damn it, if I'm looking up every word I don't know, I'm looking up every goddamn word I don't know. Okay. And so they were using slang for somebody who was Greek and someone who was Dutch and somebody who was this. And so, and I was just like, really? Do we, do we, can, we can't just say what things are? Like... You know, we have to be clever and call somebody a colostomy bag instead of a shit bag. Huh. I didn't even notice that because I was actually thinking that the other day there was I was watching something. Oh, I know what it was. It was um, uh, Atomic Blonde. Mm. And somebody says, well, you know how the krauts and the frogs are. Mm-hmm. And I was like, really? Did we? But I also found it kind of amusing in the moment. Yeah. Uh, so was it something like that here? But they kept doing it repeatedly. Yeah, it was, he would be just describing somebody in his head. Okay. Or somebody, or the the woman, but she's a man uh, detective. She called somebody a slur for uh, Dutch. I didn't know there was a slur for someone. I did Dutch. not know either. It's a stupid thing, but I don't know how offensive it is. So I'm is just it gonna... something to do with clogs? How did you know? What is this? What is it? Can you say it? It's it's cloggies. Cloggies. I swear to God, that's, that's what it? it was. Yes. That's so fucking lazy. Right? All right, I it's guess. It's like saying sauerkraut. I mean, that's just so lame. All right, mm-hmm. sure. But yeah, so there's all these around there, and it's all just and just like you know, and thank God I was I was. A, the same age as this dude, apparently. Because I probably got references that a reader who is new, who is, say, your age, Owen's age, younger, is not going to get because they just didn't grow up in the, like, as a teenager in the 90s. Right. Or, yeah. Or the technology I, that nobody uses anymore, or the little, like, shorthand for shit, like, a uh, power supply. <laughs> Like, there were all these things. And, yeah, some of his technology, the way he described it, that's how it works. But at some point, you're going to have to let go. And I figured that out when I was writing my own comic book in high school. And that's really the thing to me is just you are overestimating how interesting this is to everyone, dude. Mm -hmm. Like, there's just not – it's not something that people are usually concerned about. And I don't understand why when we've got – actual demons and things coming from other dimensions to possess people that we need to worry about how your palm pilot works like and it was a palm pilot and he says well it looks like a regular palm pilot doesn't it but such as and he he actually gives an explanation to mo when one that wasn't actually the question she was asking him and she corrects him and two we're like two thirds no we're like a halfway through the book by that point when he's explaining this to her we all know what it is. So him including that detailed description of what his magical palm top is, is way too late. If we were confused before, we figured it out now. Yeah. So don't bother now. Yeah. It, like it, This guy needed an editor and it would have been a great book. And I'm very curious, like, if the later books are, as you said, Melanie's husband was saying, if they're better, because that's what happens with Dresden Files. Yeah. The book is, is interesting, but kind of clunky. The second book is better. And then the third book, you're like, oh, okay, I see what's happening here. Let me strap in now. Right, exactly. 
Um, yeah, and but... and that was I actually looked on Amazon reviews because I was like, this has to be true, right? It gets better, doesn't it? As I'm rocking myself back and forth, and the answer was yes. So, what I'm learning here is that my patrons who vote on these are not to be trusted. <laughs> You guys have violated my trust a couple times now in a row. And last month, I can't even say, like, well, we got out of it. Because, no, you and I still spent an hour and change talking about that book. We just lost the episode. So I still put in the work. I just didn't actually get to share my actual frustrations with everybody adequately. So. I didn't get to say shit, man. I'm just very concerned that when I put out like when I start doing the um, gathering for next year's books I'm going to have to have like a bit of a moratorium on white guy like protagonists yes and be like guys maybe just don't I understand like oh it's really good though but I don't believe you and I'm kind of tired of it and I'm just not excited about it and that's the worst part is to go into something and already be like, Ugh, which I wasn't with this because I didn't really know anything about it. I was a and little I nervous try not because to even this read is the like blurbs about the books before I start them. I was nervous because none of the libraries in the DC metro area had it. Oh wow, really? None of them. Not in print, not in audiobook, nothing. That's super weird. So this is a very niche book at this point, and you know, it hopefully it'll I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, like like we've been saying, it's got this really cool concept in there and some really good story beats. It just needs... If you're going to suggest a book to Natasha, give it to somebody you know whom you appreciate and want to still like you. <laughs> and make them read it before you suggest it to Natasha. I think that's fair. I think it's a good rule of thumb. <laughs> I beg you. I don't want to hate you guys. Don't do that. I mean, again, fun. If the books later are better, great. But, like, especially... Okay, I got a question for you. What was the last third of the book for? Um, You mean when there's, like, just the regrouping afterwards and he gets to yell at a woman who's mad at him for not doing proper timekeeping? That part... I meant more like that entire plot about the Medusa, Gorgon, blah, blah, blah nonsense. That oh, could have been right. a whole nother fucking book. Is that? Because, okay, did you get, in the audiobook, I got a drop-in of um, the first two chapters of, like, the next book. Did you get that? No. No, because I got to the end, and the end was the end of the Gorgon thing. Huh. Okay. Now I'm like, did I mix part of the end of the that book with the beginning of the next book? Because they just, all they did was go, the atrocity archives ends here. And now for, and it was something like shadow something. Hmm. Um, cause this was all, cause he got rid of his boss or his boss got smacked down by the white men because of her letting in the Medusa nonsense. Right. Which is pretty clear that it's going to fucking happen. So I'm not giving away shit. Um, yeah, I'm looking at the thing to see if it says with a little do 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 the Jennifer Morgue. I'm pretty sure that's not the name of the next book that they announced. Maybe it was. Well, oh, well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, maybe maybe that's all like he's trying to do like a, a uh finale thing where the finale of a season of tv often everything really big happens in the second to last episode mm -hmm. and then the actual finale is all set up for the start of the next season which is ridiculous because you're just sitting there going like you could have made this into two books mm -hmm. or put a third story in and taken out the shit in the first one I'm making there... cleaning motions in my with my hands that you can't see. <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like I feel kind of bad because it's been literally 24 minutes, and I feel like I've said everything that I want to say about this book. Um, 
but I don't disagree with you because clearly whatever was at the end, I've like put into the second book category, even though I think it wasn't. <laughs> so I think you're probably right. And then, and yeah, I'm, I just, I want more, like, I want more of the monsters. Yeah. Like, why are they doing the things they're doing? I mean, okay. I actually got a little bit like, I'm not going to say I got teared up because anybody who listens to any of the podcasts I do, you got to be fucking kidding me. I don't get teared up. <laughs> but I'm cold and, and inhumane. But the point at which we have a character who has been a decent, good person and we've met their spouse ends up or at least know that their spouse exists i can't remember which one is which but it's pretty clear he's going to you know take the grenade for everyone else to save humanity and that actually is pretty difficult because Mm -hmm. they don't take away the they don't he doesn't quote unquote wave a magic wand and take away everything that could happen to this guy There Mm -hmm. are consequences, and it is hard because he's created a very likable character in a very short space of time. Right. Yeah, I actually agree. That part was kind of moving, and the guy being, him being like, I don't have anybody. I am 100% more replaceable. And the reply being, this is my job. I'm a soldier. And I was just like, ugh. This sucks. I know. I was like, dude, I'll do it. <laughs> Let me. Right? Your wife is not. You have kids. No. So, yeah, I agree with that. So I was right there with Bob. I'm like, yeah, let Bob do it. Because, you know, he's not going to die. He's got plot armor. He'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, that's true, right? And they're just <laughs> like, just let the man dude do it. But, um, I mean, that guy does get fucked up, but he's, he manages to get through it. Yeah, it's just, and then, and again, the guy is very particular about following the rules of science and medicine and everything, and Mm -hmm. he deals with it. What would have happened? What do you think about the pinky and the brain roommates? What the fuck was that? I just, that's one of those things that I sincerely can't decide how I feel about it. I'm really on the fence where part of me is like, I guess that's fun. And another part of me is like, but why though? Like, I don't really get the point other than to make a, another reference. It seemed like a reference and it seemed like he was saying, okay, well, okay, here's another thing that I was going to talk about and I feel bad because it's kind of shitting on it, but this is just my personal view. So, oh, well, okay. it actually bothered me that they took real people that have been alive in at least they've been alive while other people on this planet are alive. And that seems to be my my near need for removal from a situation to play with something. So okay. Alan Turing. Right. His death in this book is because he knew too much. It wasn't because he was being persecuted for being gay. Right. And that was just, yeah, it made me feel a little sick, especially since today is here. Like we're in June and all that good stuff. Right. Yeah. We have, it's pride month. <laughs> so that and, was, that, uh... That was a little weird, and it seemed like he wanted to say, hey, we figured out... He does say, hey, we figured out that the real problem with blackmail is not letting people out of the closet. Mm -hmm. So how about we just let people be gay, and then there's no issue. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh... But there's no gay couple in that the relationship that they have with Pinky and the Brain could be as platonic as possible. It doesn't fucking matter. Yeah, he's just kind of like, oh, well, it takes a while for some people to, like, figure it out. And I'm like, well, yeah, because you haven't written anything remotely romantic in. Because why? Because you want the credit of having a gay couple in the book without actually having to do any of that weird gay shit. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, that's a good point about Alan Turing because there's a there's – a couple things that I've read that do things like that where they kind of retcon somebody's involvement or, you know, that's just a a thing in a lot of sci-fi. And I have that sort of like mixed reaction a lot of the time, but this in particular is a pretty egregious, like whitewashing of what that actually was. And it reminds like, cause um, you know, one of my favorite Halloween time movies is Hocus Pocus. And as much as it's just a goofy, fun movie, Brendan used to get really annoyed by it because he's like, you know, women died because people said they were witches. They were tortured and killed. 
And the premise behind movies like this is, no, but they were really witches, though. And he just would get so irritated. And it was something that, like, for me, I was able to just be like, yeah, I get it. But this is funny, though. And it's yes. fine. But really, if I stop and think about it, I'm like, yeah, that is kind of fucked up to just be like, well, they maybe they were tortured and killed uh, for the right reasons, guys. You don't know. <laughs> and it's like, mm, I, I, and not saying that that's a real problem specifically with Hocus Pocus because it's so goofy. Yeah. But that is something that comes up a lot. Like the whole Salem thing being brought back in tons and tons of, uh, Oh yeah. You know, literary and, uh, film the vampire diaries. Right. There you go. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, yeah, I, and, and it's for me, it's the same thing of, okay, so nobody was alive to witness that. So I can mm -hmm. kind of, have some sort of, sort of emotional distance. But the same thing happened again when they talked about why all the people that the Nazis killed were killed in horrible, horrible ways. Right? And I'm like, you have slightly validated those atrocities. Mm -hmm. And I am not even slightly okay with this. Yeah, that was, an, that was a weird thing. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. You pretty much said it. Like, there were a couple... I'm trying to think, because I know that there was one other one. Oh, I wish I could remember what it was now. But, yeah, there was another one, too, where he did a similar thing. And he was like, well, you know why they did that was because... And I was like, oh, really? We're going to do this? Okay. I mean, he also mentioned POWs and stuff, so I don't think that that was it, but... No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was just... It was horrifying. I mean, he talked about Saddam Hussein's administration and, and the bot and yeah i mean yeah saddam hussein being brought up a lot was also like kind of threw me for a loop <laughs> i mean i was like okay remember that point in time in history yeah just um i think that there. was i think i expected this book to feel more timeless i guess but you and, and like granted when you bring technology into anything the timeless thing is really not going to happen because tech is inherently like a time stamp but I can still sort of even like kind of head canon that like they're using old tech that they've repurposed for, you know, magical occult purposes. I mean, for fuck's sake, he was cutting Cat 5 cable and that's just ridiculous why they wouldn't have a trunk line at that point. See, this is what I'm saying. Things like this. Because I'm just by like, that point, at that year, that was incorrect. There were a couple times where he did fuck up, and I'm like, look, motherfucker, I know this is wrong. And that's what you get when you are so specifically trying to be right all the time, is you're going to fuck up, and then you lose credibility, even though you should have gotten all this goodwill. Um, yeah, so I feel like I headcanoned, like, well, you know, even, like, the Palm Pilot thing. Yeah. It's super janky and old, but it's so... It's so, uh, they're, ch they've changed the use of it so much that I can be like, yeah, all right, sure. They took something way old, like a Palm Pilot and turned it into a weird new magical technology. And for all I know, old tech works better for that. Like how Harry Dresden has to drive a beetle because it's more stable because it all is so like friggin' ancient. Um, so I could deal with that. But then, yeah, mentions of Saddam Hussein, it's sort of like when you're watching Amelie. Have you ever seen that movie? No. Amelie is this incredibly timeless feeling movie. It could be like, yeah. and then they mentioned the death of Princess Di. And I was so thrown. And then when I watched the special features, the director said he specifically inserted that because the whole movie felt like it was out of time and he wanted to ground it a little. And I guess you could say that happens with mm -hmm. this, with the mention of Saddam Hussein. Um, I suppose I would have preferred that what went down did involve Saddam Hussein rather than Nazis in a way. Yeah. If we were going to go that way. Yeah, I actually but also was kind Nazis of hoping... escaping to the moon is kind of rad, so I don't know. I mean, there was parts of it that were like, okay, so this is at least something that, you know, we can all... He even mentions the video game where this fucking happens. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, not particularly this, but, you know, Castle Wolfenstein, blah, blah, blah. 
So seriously, if you aren't exactly my age and have exactly my degrees, I don't like, I don't understand how you would get through half of this book without just being like, fuck it and throwing it aside. <sighs> yeah, I am. Um, I just, I feel like it sounds like I'm being so hard on this book and that I didn't enjoy it at all. And that's not fair. No, no. As soon as you hit about page 120, it is great. <laughs> Once I got past, like, I was really kind of hanging out. I, I liked the opening where he's just sitting out in the fucking rain. That was hilarious. And he's really, I, I always enjoy the emphasis on bureaucracy when doing spy work. I find that really interesting. Yes. Um, and making it, you know, making a point that this is still just a job and you still have to check all, check everything off and dot your I's and cross your T's and yeah, you get to do some exciting stuff here and there, but mostly it's kind of a desk job. Um, that I'm always a fan of. Yeah. So I like that opening. Yeah, somebody actually in a review, because as I said, I went to Amazon to see what the reviews were for different things. And somebody was like, I don't like how it's so bureaucratic. And as somebody who is indeed working for the government, but they got it so right. Right. Oh my God, it's so correct. It burns. It burns, Natasha. You don't even know. I don't think. You never worked for the government, I hope, right? Uh, No. Oh, never. good. Good. I mean, I love the benefits. My job can be interesting some days, but it, what was said in the book was said. <laughs> I said what I said. <laughs> I said what I didn't fucking say. Um, and I did like the <laughs> similar on this on similar lines as the bureaucracy. The constant feeling of like kind of frustration that you can't tell anybody what you know mm -hmm. um i always like i i understand the idea that people have that it would be really satisfying to know a bunch of stuff that other people don't but there does come a point in your life where you're gonna want to talk about stuff because it's gonna be affecting you and you can't and that's really frustrating and I like that that comes up a few times. And finally, he's able to just open up and tell Mo everything. Because she's cleared. Right. But I really don't... I don't get what Mo sees in him at all. I... Okay. Full disclosure. He describes her when he very first meets her as yes. seeming kind of alien. Mm -hmm. Because she's so tall and gorgeous. Yeah. And then she's into him for seemingly no reason whatsoever and I 100% right up until the end thought that she was some sort of alien creature in disguise like luring him into this place I, by pretending to be kidnapped absolutely I was with you I was like are we doing this which one yep. are we doing completely stupid chick or alien those are my <laughs> options <laughs> Yeah, apparently, no, we're just going to have her get abducted and need rescuing, which is super boring, and I was really hoping for something more there. Yeah, because I felt bad for her, because what a lame... And he actually does apologize. He's like, they were done with you, and I'm sorry, and that sucks. Mm -hmm. Because they did know that folks were after her, and, like, you know, the creature understood that somebody would come after her. Right. That she was a good little mouse, or she used to put in the mouse trap, so to speak. Do you know that mice don't like cheese? They like peanut butter, right? Yeah. That's the thing to do if you want them to come is also sweets. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, guys, if you're uh, loading mouse traps, which don't do that. That's just mean. Yeah. But if you are, peanut butter and, like, fruit and candy and stuff, that's the thing. They could be they could be live traps that you want to get the get the mice in so you can put them someplace else. I guess that's true. Yeah. I mean, that's what that's what we ended up doing. And putting them into the fraternity quad. Not that we would ever do that when I was in college. Um. <laughs> also, if you want to rescue kittens who are trapped, get them either 
sardines or chicken McNuggets. Those are their two favorite things. McNuggets? Yes. Isn't that you weird? Chickens have something in common. Right? I love me some McNuggets, even though they're like not food. I know, but they smell. The I think it's because they smell so potent that that's, you know, them and sardines. That's all I got, man. Right. But yeah. Yeah. So all I could think of why she liked him was because he was, he was as honest as he could be with her. He did risk his life and was one of those guys who clearly at the end of the day would do what he thought was right. Yes. And she had been married to a New York lawyer. And that's all I'll have to say about that. Well. <laughs> <laughs> for, for those of you who have not listened to anything with me on it, which will be uh, 95% of anybody who's listening to this right now, uh, I am an attorney and was married to a PhD physicist who was tr- trying to get on tenure track. But I'm bum man things have changed a lot in a short time <laughs> and trying to get on tenure track just seems like an absolute pipe dream at this point oh he gave up i mean i see people still trying and i'm like man, for the wrong re- for the wrong reasons but he gave up pretty quick um so, in my opinion <laughs> seb if you're listening to this what the fuck tee <laughs> and i mean more what the fuck are you listening to this for um yeah, so I think I feel like that's it. Is there anything else that you wanted to mention on this? Hmm. I, I feel like this is a series that could have a lot of potential, yes. but I would need people that I really trust, i.e. not my patrons, apparently, <laughs> to tell me that his act- the actual like real world plot points, and by that I mean you know, not the monster parts, but the uh, dealing with representation of actual people and not boring, oh, she was kidnapped and I have to save her kinds of boilerplate stuff. I would need a lot of reassurance that that improves and that the tech babble gets put shunted aside in favor of just interesting details on the rituals and monsters and whatever so that he, because he trusts that we believe him now. Yeah, I mean, because you know, it seems like he just kept wanting to prove something. Yeah, and he would explain things three different ways. I learned by the time I was trying to finish reading. Mm-hmm. But if what I would really like at the end of the day is if he had a not so much a boss and a boss's boss and people that knew what he was doing, but I wish he had a coworker, like a real one. Mm-hmm. Because that would be fucking awesome to see that interaction. Yeah, I feel like that was um, supposed to be what Mo like turned into when she got kind of hired on. Mm-hmm. But she wasn't but, a field agent necessarily. Yeah, exactly. Like it didn't really work because she wasn't doing what he did. Even though she got clearance for some stuff, she didn't have it for the same stuff that he did. Which makes sense. And yeah, there was just a lot of little things that kind of kept that from really working out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I, I basically, I mean, we keep on talking about things we would like to see. So apparently we like the world. Yeah, that's, yeah, exactly. The world is great. <laughs> that's <laughs> the first and last time you will ever hear me or Krista say <laughs> that sentence ever. <laughs> Funny, because it's true. <laughs> the world is great. Oh, really? <laughs> I know. As soon as it came out of my mouth, it almost shriveled up and died. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah. All right. Well, guys, um, I hope that y'all enjoyed this episode. I'm sorry if it was uh, kind of much shorter than it normally is, but this felt very straightforward and the, I don't know, there just doesn't, there's not a lot to dig into. I don't feel like unless I also knew some of the tech stuff that Krista knows, and then I could engage her on that. But I don't feel like that would be interesting for anyone to listen to. Well, and on top of which, I don't think it would be particularly interesting because it's just, well, this was true, wasn't it? Yes, yes, it was. Well, this was true, <laughs> wasn't it? Yes, yes, it was. Oh, he messed up and misspelled this person's name. Ha <laughs> ha. Right. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, what he was saying was, you know, 90% accurate, and that was pretty impressive. But at the same time, was it worth it? Right. 
It's kind of like having perfect 90s eyebrow or 2000s eyebrows. Congratulations. I can't get those eyebrows, man. 90s I just... nobody should have had those eyebrows. I I'm not I I just don't have eyebrows. And I do blame the 90s in part because I waxed a bunch of it off. Hmm. But I don't think that they are really to blame. Nobody, but nobody needs to get The trend them. today is the big fuzzy eyebrows, and I can't get those either, even drawing was, them on. That was the fucking 80s. Why are we redoing things? But basically, yeah, that's what I'm saying is it's a lot of effort. I don't know if the payoff is worth it. Maybe other people who are really into technology were just really excited to read something where they're like, yeah, this is me. This could be me. And maybe that was the appeal. Maybe. But I could have been Bob and I would have been less annoying. And I would have been nicer to my dad, Fred. Thank you. (laughs) I would have. I don't know. All right. I feel like I'm about to beat a dead horse here. Okay. So thank you all (laughs) so so much for listening. Uh, You know where to find us. Facebook.com slash unspoiled pod. Twitter at unspoiled show. Instagram at unspoiled podcast. You can email me at unspoiled podcast at gmail.com. Website is unspoiled podcast.com. And I think that's everything. Um, Let me check out what's next month because I just looked it up, but then immediately forgot. And that's how it goes, man. That's how right. it goes. Yeah. I really would like, I'm, I'm thinking about trying to do the book club episodes live again. Oh, okay. Because Crowdcast has seemed to be like working properly. Oh, nice. That would also be fun because then folks who have read the book and have more to say or who have, you know, if it's a series gone further into the series or. Right. Because like, I feel bad sometimes when I read one of these books and with you and I haven't, I don't know it cold. Mm-hmm. And I think. Um, because what I had used to do was try and use the recordings from YouTube and like strip it and then use that for the podcast. And that was really hard, but now I'm having everybody record on their own end. Mm -hmm. So the sound can still be great while we're on crowdcast and that would work out fine. So I think I'm going to do that. And, uh, so keep, keep your ear to the ground guys. The next book, uh, the next book is Eleanor and Park. By Rainbow Rowell. Hmm. Um, this is a book that I already know I'm not going to like. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, no! And this, the reason is that, well, I've been spoiled on a few small things. Oh! That just irritated me right away. And um, I, just bear with me, guys, because I, I think... Unlike this book where I think people wanted me to read it because they loved it, I think with Eleanor and Park, it's going to be, we want you to read it because this is an infuriating book. Oh, why are you doing this And we this want to you her? to, like, rip it apart. It's kind of like everybody being really excited about Overdue last month reading. <laughs> Fifty uh, Shades. No, they did Twilight. Oh, Twilight. It was... <laughs> so it was I think that's kind of really what it is yeah that, um, that was a great episode but let me see if there's somebody who has called dibs it, on not it right i'm looking at it I'm sorry, right. like i am no no this would be month three and no i am excited about october which one's october uh, uh oh dead until dark. dark right which is from a series that I've read from beginning to end and have seen the entire TV show based off of it and have listened to all the audiobooks, including the short stories. So I know uh, that one, guys. Is and one somebody of made a, a careless comment that spoiled me on something that's going to happen in that book I when I announced that I was covering it. People really underestimate what I can glean from implied spoilers. But well, m- Much love to that person, but it was pretty fucking obvious what was going to happen at that point. Uh, like, I was really mad (laughs) i may i may have screamed what the fuck yeah i was just like really come on um yeah nobody has claimed eleanor and park (laughs) ask early and often to touch it because otherwise it ends up being me this might be a live like i might because i have been doing some other podcasts live but you know having them be restricted to uh, patrons and I'm, mm-hmm. we're thinking about trying to do Harry Potter live again mm-hmm. um, but 
I might do the book clubs like open to everybody the way that I was before, I think. Cause well, that would be cool. And if you, you know, if you had to talk, I don't know. I don't know if you'd want to talk to, on your own about something you hated. Mm. That'd be rough. I feel like Owen would hate this as much as me. <laughs> based on Just based on the little things that I've heard. Oh, oh can you tell? Can you tell? I don't want to tell because okay. it's garbled enough that it won't make sense. Okay. But um, once I... I'm, I'm go- I usually wait to read these until like the week of the recording. Okay. So, um, you know, keep your eye, keep your ears to the ground guys. And, uh, I'm going to make an event on the Facebook page for the next recording because I try and do them the first weekend of the month. So July 7th, which I'm feeling like, I'm not sure who's going to be able to come to that because it's a, it's the Saturday of the 4th of July, like week. But- but yeah, but it lands right on a Wednesday, so they might take the before rather than the after. You know? Yeah, so that's kind of what I'm thinking. Is like, is it better to do the before or after? Um, find out who so, the hell is volunteering to read. This. Yeah, find out who's volunteering to read and find out what works for the crowd if they would be interested. I'll make yeah. a um, an event and then just like kind of post it with a question mark. So yeah, keep your eyes out for that, guys. Unspoiled. Uh, it's facebook.com slash unspoiled pod is where the event will be. And I think I'll try, if I do this, I'll try to schedule on um, uh, and add a calendar to my face or my website as well, if I can. Ooh. Although most people do things through Facebook now, so it's really not necessary. <laughs> um, all right. I think that's everything. Do you want to plug? Sure, sure. Uh Jamie and I are on season five of Lost. I actually like it because it's all uh, timey-wimey, wimbly, mimbly stuff that I don't actually understand because I've never seen Doctor Who. But uh, I think it's kind of fun and it's silly and it's not love triangles and I appreciate that. Also, we are going to be starting up The Vampire Diary soon. And yes, to our one fan who was who reached out on our Punisher account on Twitter... We're starting that up again soon. Uh, I just got back from being at the hospital every day for the last two, three months. And oddly enough, that kind of took up a lot of my time. So (laughs) now that I'm feeling some better, we're hoping that I will, you know, first get back to work and be a good kid there. And then... A good kid. (laughs) That's pretty much what it feels like some days. And then get back to doing the things I like to do, which is uh, talking to Jamie about TV shows. Cool, cool. Yes, and getting to talk to Natasha. Woo! Yay! Uh, All right, everybody. Well, I already told you where to find us, so we will see you next month with Eleanor and Park. (laughs) Dun-dun-dun. Toodaloo, motherfuckers. Spoiled Network Podcast.